Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the trailer for House of the Dragon, adapted from George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones prequel, Fire and Blood, recounting the history of the Targaryen Civil War, known as the Dance of the Dragons. AKA how unnecessary but fascinating drama is provoked by bullshit succession customs, kid fights, and incest. The series premieres on August 21st on HBO Max, and since I started on this channel by analyzing Game of Thrones, I cannot wait to return to Westeros and remember when I was a younger YouTube breaker downer invisibly terrified to be in front of a camera, worried that speaking too loud would piss off the neighbors. Now, I don't care! Oh, and as I break this down, I understand a lot of people may be watching the show without having read Fire and Blood, which is totally okay. But I will be talking about some of the events that happened in the book, but not the really cool big spoilery stuff that happens later in the book, because I think those will happen in later seasons of this show. So don't worry, I have your back. I'm not gonna ruin it for you. But if you wanna go in completely blind, you know, maybe don't click on YouTube videos about this. Let's dive in. Here we go. The dream, it was clearer than a memory. Okay, we open on Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen in the Red Keep, seeing someone on the Iron Throne. So this story is all about the succession from her father, King Viserys I. He was the fifth king of the Targaryen dynasty that was started by Aegon the Conqueror. So it went Aegon the First, then Aenys the First, then Maegor the First, then Jaehaerys the First, and now Viserys the First. Viserys is actually the grandson to Jaehaerys. Viserys is appointed by a council of lords. So really, king after king, it's just been kind of a mess. Viserys is one of the namesakes of Daenerys' brother Viserys, that we saw in Game of Thrones, but this Viserys is 10 generations before we meet them. Rhaenyra is Viserys' firstborn, but since she's a female, others want Viserys' younger brother, Daemon, to be the heir. Rhaenyra's mother, Emma, died giving birth to the son, Balon, who also died a day later. Viserys then remarried to Alicent Hightower and produced two sons with her, Aegon II and his younger brother, Aemon. And then later on, Alicent and her faction want the line of succession to continue through Aegon. So two factions form, some supporting the princess, Rhaenyra, the Blacks, others supporting the queen, Alicent, and her father, Otto, and her sons, they go by the Greens. Green versus Black. Here in this opening shot, you see the Iron Throne is now actually closer in its appearance to George R. R. Martin's book descriptions. It wasn't just a normal-sized throne or a chair made out of swords. It was supposed to be a giant mound, a thick nest of swords closer to a briar patch with steps leading up through this tangle of swords. But since they want to keep some continuity with the HBO series, here you can see how they kept that throne, but then had this briar patchy tangle of swords surrounding it. So you can still see how this throne later leads to the throne we see in the later era. Director Miguel Sapochnik, who directed some of the best episodes of Game of Thrones, is returning to direct this series, and the great composer Ramin Jawadi is doing the music once more. And you can actually hear these piano notes might sound familiar to you. They do evoke the melody of Jenny of Old Stones. The dream, it was clearer than a memory. High in the halls of the kings who are gone. So that song comes from the A Song of Ice and Fire books. When the Brotherhood Without Banners takes Arya to High Heart, and the ghost of High Heart requests this song as payment for her prophetic visions. It's actually believed that it was her prophecy of the prince who was promised that led the Targaryen line in the future to force the Mad King to marry his sister. The song's lyrics lament Jenny of Old Stones, the woman who Prince Duncan Targaryen left the throne for, leaving the realm with the Mad King. Duncan and Jenny and many other Targaryens would die in the tragic fire at Summerhall. Ah, listen to me, I'm expounding on Game of Thrones lore that none of the characters in this show would know or care about. Let's move on. When I heard the sound of thundering hooves, splintering shields and ringing swords, and I placed my hair upon the Iron Throne, and all the dragons roared as one. So young Rhaenyra rides through the forest, followed by a white-cloaked Kingsguard, most likely her protector, Sir Criston Cole. And we get the shots of the tourney at Maidenpool that's to celebrate Viserys' ascension to replace his grandfather, and a duel between Criston Cole and the badass prince Daemon Targaryen, in which I will just say, Daemon ends this getting pretty humiliated. So Cole gives young Rhaenyra, who's watching, his laurel, leading this girl to crush on him hard. Actually, according to a fool named Mushroom that I really hope shows up in the show, young Rhaenyra might have been 
coached by her uncle Damon to seduce Sir Kristen. If that sounds gross, trust me, it gets grosser. There's a hint to that creepy relationship here as we see Kristen unsheathing his sword in front of Rhaenyra. Then we get this close up of Viserys placing his hand on the armrest of the Iron Throne and notice a stain of blood is visible, a cut on his finger, which is a major detail because in the books, the throne is made of these swords that make the throne just really difficult to sit in. If you were to shift the wrong way, you'll cut yourself. And anyone who gets cut sitting on this throne is believed to be cursed. Viserys' curse will ultimately be the chaos he leaves behind. And as we will see, there is one warring ruler who will later take this throne who will also cut themselves. Then we see a dragon soaring over King's Landing. This is Syrax, the yellow scaled female dragon ridden by Rhaenyra. It soars over a younger version of this city. We know it's younger because it is soaring toward the dragon pit atop the hill of Rhaenys. Still fully intact and looking magnificent. This was built by Megor the first as a great stone stable for the dragons. And during the events of the series, it will become a very important location where traitors are executed during the civil war. And many claim the dragons being kept here stunts their growth. And over the course of history, it does get destroyed, which we know from watching Game of Thrones when those leaders have their summits in the pit's ruins. A behind the scenes reel earlier this week extended this shot to show Syrax flying toward the Red Keep, which you can see is still under a bit of construction. Let's move on. I consider the matter urgent, that of your succession. Well, who else would have a claim? The firstborn child. Rhaenyra, no queen has ever sat the Iron Throne. The king has an heir, Daemon Targaryen. Here a royal carriage carts in Alicent Hightower to King's Landing past a statue of a dragon. Presumably this is Balerion the Black Dread, the dragon of the great Aegon the Conqueror. I mean, it could be, I mean, I guess it could be one of the other past King's dragons, but I mean, he would have been the most famous one at this point in history. There's a meeting of Viserys' small council where each of them have a billiard ball sized uh, orb sitting before them. Not sure what these are. I wonder if it could be how they cast boats or maybe something they have to eat to appease Viserys. Joining Viserys' meeting is his hand, Otto Hightower, you can see his Hand of the King pin on his lapel. This is Alicent Hightower's father. Behind the king is his Lord Commander of the King's Guard, Sir Kristen Cole's predecessor, Sir Harold Westerling. On the right, to his left, is his Master of Laws, Lionel Strong, and his Grand Maester, and then his Master of Coin. And then at the other end, joining him is Corlys Valerion. This is a renowned seafarer and Lord of Driftmark, an island kingdom near Dragonstone. And for now, the Valerions are key allies to the Targaryens. You notice their white hair that comes from their intertwined history with the Targaryen bloodline. Aegon the Conqueror's son, Aenys married Alyssa Valerion. So, you know, they're all swapping. This group is debating Viserys' successor. Otto Hightower is pushing this out of loyalty to his daughter, Alicent, who gave Viserys his two younger male heirs, Aegon and Aemond. Corlys is pushing Daemon. Again, this is Viserys' younger brother, Matt Smith's character, whom Corlys fought beside in the War for the Stepstones. Ultimately, Viserys is going to appoint his firstborn daughter, Rhaenyra, anyway, and demand all the lords of the Seven Kingdoms swear fealty to both him and to her. When Alicent chooses not to go along with that, that's how the Civil War begins. We see Damon riding into this tourney, just looking awesome in his armor, his dragon's wings sticking off his helmet, even his horse has matching armor. This while his young niece, Rhaenyra, looks on, about to be smitten with Sir Kristen Cole. We see Rhaenyra a bit later on in her life, strolling with Lenor Valerion, that's Corlys' son. You can see their sigil of the seahorse on his chest. These two will end up getting married, but it does not last. We see Damon with the city watch of King's Landing with their gold cloaks. During his brief time of Master of Laws, Damon reformed the city watch and gave them their signature gold cloaks, leaving them with immense loyalty for him that will prove critical during this Civil War period. On to the next clip. I will not be made to choose between my brother and my daughter. So Princess Rhaenyra and Sir Harold Westerling look out upon these warriors representing various houses with Sir Kristen Cole out front. You may recognize the red archer on the green banner of House Tarly on the right. Beside it, the boar of House Kaycall. You can also see on the left side, the silver eagle on the indigo field of House Malister. This is likely Sir Lyman Malister who fought in this tourney and ended up defeating Sir Kristen in the joust. Then this fateful meetup on the walking bridge lead in Dragonstone. Dragons are flying overhead and you can see Syrax soaring in front of the sun. And on the level, you can see how the sunlight peeks through the flaps of her wing, just making it look even more realistic by having it interact with the environment. On the left, that looks like Damon's dragon, Caraxes, who we'll see more of later in this trailer. So let's move on. Rhaenyra's succession will be challenged. Knives will come out. You are the king. Your duty is to take a new wife.
So Corlys Valerion talks with his wife Rhaenys. She is a Targaryen originally, and she's known as the queen who never was. She's gonna play a mentor role to Rhaenyra, and a character I'm very excited to spend a lot of time with. Then a shot of Daemon strutting into the Red Keep throne room, carrying this hammer and wearing a crown that he has fashioned for himself. This is the hammer of Kragus Crabfeeder, which Daemon defeats in the war for the Stepstones. The Stepstones are the islands near the Broken Arm in the Southern Narrow Sea. Daemon and Corlys fight in this war against the Triarchy. That's the Principality of Dorne in this time in history. On to the next clip. I've decided to name a new heir. I'm your heir. War is afoot. Do you think the Ram will ever accept me as their queen? A woman would not inherit the Iron Throne. Because that is the order of things. When I'm queen, I will create a new order. So Viserys holds the sword Blackfire. This was the Targaryen ancestral sword that was first carried by Aegon the Conqueror. But Daemon responding, I'm your heir, is quite the statement. Because he was never named the heir. It was always going to be either Rhaenyra or Alicent's son, Aegon II. But it just shows you the balls on this guy. And then back to this tense meetup on the bridge. So we see Daemon Targaryen leading the faction of the Blacks, threatening Otto Hightower, representing the Greens. Daemon has come to Dragonstone to take this dragon egg. And with him is Miseria, a woman from Essos who becomes his mistress of whispers, and here she is carrying his child. And having to part ways from her under Viserys' orders is going to drive a major wedge between Damon and his older brother. We see younger Rhaenyra with Sir Criston as she bristles against the succession custom of male heirs as she makes her plan to break the wheel. Does it sound familiar? Yeah, it's meant to. And then we get this great shot of her riding her dragon, Syrax. We're going to get a lot of great aerial dragon sequences on this series. The budget has increased, my friends. And this trailer isn't even showing the best of it. We won't even see the best of it this season. Let's move on. Your family has dragons. Yeah, power men should never have trifled with. Okay, here we see the aftermath of the War for the Stepstones. Daemon is fighting a soldier of the Triarchy, the people from Dorne. And then we see a steaming dragon egg. And then Daemon in the dragon pit with his dragon, Caraxes, fierce and red. I love how when it exhales, it blows his hair back. Just another example of the effects interacting with the real environment to sell this as real. Then another shot of young Aemon Targaryen. The moment he approaches the largest dragon we will see in the series, Vagar. We only see its feet and tail, but this thing is massive. This is a pretty important moment in the book. I'm gonna go into it here because it does incite the rest of the events. So this comes after Aemon interprets something his father says to him as a dare to mount a dragon. So the boy sneaks off to Vagar and ends up joyriding this thing around, but it gets caught by a young Joffrey Valerion. So 10-year-old Aemon pushes three-year-old Joffrey into dragon shit. I mean, Aemon is a bit of a prick, but this ends up in a nasty fight between Aemon and Joffrey's older brothers, Lucaris and Jacaris. Aemon calls these kids the Strongs implying that they are bastards. And he knows what he's saying because this is deeply insulting to the entire family. This fight ends with Luke cutting out Eamon's eye. The parents get involved with this and the feud goes on to curse both families. We'll talk about this more later, but let's move on. If Rhaenyra comes into power, she could cut off any challenge to her succession. I am to inherit the Iron Throne. She will block my way. Our hearts remain as one. Oh, our hearts were never one. There's a shot of Alicent Hightower and Rhaenys before the throne. Alicent wears a seven-pointed star necklace this is for the Faith of the Seven, though at this point in history, the Faith hasn't yet been established as the sanctioned religion of the realm, like the Sept has not been built yet. There's another shot of Rhaenyra's dragon, Syrax, and then a shot of Rhaenyra approaching the crown. This would be after Viserys' death. The Kingsguard, who were supposed to be loyal to Aegon II, end up stealing the crown and bringing it to Rhaenyra, supporting her claim. This is a period when Alicent is rushing to claim the throne using her father, Otto, the Hand, as the Lord Protector. Both sides are being pretty shady about this, but at least when it comes to the claim to the throne, it's hard not to support Rhaenyra in it, even if a lot of her actions are uh, kind of messed up. Then we get a shot of the older Aemon one Eye training in combat now with Sir Criston Cole. So Sir Criston goes from being Rhaenyra's protector in the King's Guard to walking in on her with her uncle Damon in a brothel. So he leaves disgusted, and now we see him going hard, training a major rival to Damon and Rhaenyra's claim. Aemon goes on to be a vicious player in this civil war. The kid is known for keeping a sapphire in his eye socket and later just kind of covers it with a patch. And then we get this famous moment from the Fire and Blood book where Alicent and Rhaenyra are seated beside each other at a dinner. Alicent is wearing green, Rhaenyra dressed in black and crimson, which is how the Greens versus the Blacks tradition begins. On to the next clip. Imagine yourself on the Iron Throne. Where is 
duty where he sacrificed. Here we briefly see a Baratheon knight whose horse neighs. You can see the Baratheon stag on the shield. I assume this is from the tourney, but just keep in mind, the Baratheons play a very important role later on in this conflict. There is a bit of a skirmish above Storm's End in Shipbreaker Bay that I don't want to get into yet because I think this is going to end up being like the amazing season two finale. Then there's this stunning shot from the final blows of the Warp of the Stepstone showing Damon finishing off Krager with his own hammer. Notice the crabs on the beach. Krager got his name of Crab Beater because he would stake men on the beach and wait for the tide to go out so the crabs would come in and start gnawing on them. We also see Damon and Caraxes just torching these soldiers along the cliff. Then there's this very important moment in which Alicent snatches the dagger to charge toward Rhaenyra to demand justice for young Aemon's eye being cut out by Lucaris Valerion. Yes, this is the same Valerian steel dragger that would go on to play a huge role in A Song of Ice and Fire. The same cat's paw dagger used to try to kill Bran, which Littlefinger used to frame Tyrion, but really that hit was ordered by Joffrey and a blade reclaimed by the Stark in Game of Thrones season seven and used in season eight to slay the Night King. One weapon behind all of this family drama. And there's a very quick shot of Caraxes and you can see that he's wearing a saddle marked with the Targaryen sigil. I love how these things used to actually have saddles on them. Let's move on to the final section. Now they see you as you are. Yeah, I love that tension and the acidity with which Rhaenyra says, now they see you as you are. And saying it to Allison that way just to get under her skin. Rhaenyra is savoring this moment because it finally forced Allison to lose herself publicly in front of everyone. And we end with a shot of a dragon. At first, I thought this might be Vagar, but it's actually Cyrax. Despite the dragon Rhaenyra stood in front of in the promo image having golden eyes, the Funko for Cyrax has green eyes like this one does. I really think they're gonna save the visuals for the massive Vagar for the show's release. This series honestly looks pretty good. And since we already know how it ends, it just really allows these producers to take their time with it and savor these vicious moments between the characters. And the behind the scenes, real makes it look like they are sparing no expense on the sets and the VFX. I can't wait to dive into this. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstar. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.